Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to take a look at putting together your brand new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Now, this A1 Mini is by far my favorite 3D printer of every printer I've tried over the years, over the last decade. Uh, this beats them all. Uh, it is a fantastic little printer. It doesn't take much to put it together, but I thought I'd still do a uh, assembly video because I have had a lot of requests for it. And I've got a few uh, things I've done that aren't covered in the instruction manual just to make it work just a little bit better. Before we get started, if you would, please click that like and subscribe button. And if you have time, leave a fast comment. Uh, those really do help me with the YouTube algorithm. It doesn't promote small channels uh, like this like they used to. So if you like what I do here, if these videos help you out, uh, please consider helping me out and doing those three things really fast. Thank you. So we'll get started here. Um, to begin with, this black piece here is only in place for shipping. So it's got four screws on it. You'll need to remove those four screws before proceeding. Uh, but they give you all the tools necessary in the toolkit for working on this thing. They give you two uh, hex keys. They give you uh, a little bit of starter oil for it. Uh, just note that I do have a separate uh, lubrication video that I'm going to link at the end of this video and also in the video description because you will need to lubricate this printer before using it. Um, but make sure, I'm not going to duplicate that here. I just have a whole separate video on how to do it and make sure you do that before running it. Um, so anyways, you're going to take out these four screws on this. Uh, it's a bracket that's holding uh, the z-axis in place and the x-axis uh, from moving around. But you're going to take that off. Be sure to remove those foam inserts under your print bed. Next up, there are three screws on the underside of the movable build plate of the platform that you're going to need to do. And I'm showing those here in red. Uh, it's just it's too hard to get a shot under the printer. But those three screws in these three positions need to be tightened. And if you look under here, this is what the screw looks like. Um, it's just on the very end of that uh, bracket arm, the three positions, tighten that up. When you're tightening this, if you need to tilt the printer like I'm showing here, set it on the foam rubber that came with the printer so you're not uh, putting stress on that x-axis or pushing into that arm. Uh, next up, we're going to install the bracket that holds the uh, spool holder just two screws uh, put those into the uh, mounting bracket and then screw those into the back of the z-axis extrusion extension there finish by sliding the spool holder down over the mounting plate next up uh, this is something i do to all of my printers i use ptfe plumbing tape you can get this at any hardware store but what i do is i wrap it around uh, the uh, arm for the spool and what this does is it just reduces friction and so what you're going to want to do is get two little pieces of scotch tape get your ptfe tape out you're going to want to wind this in the same direction that the spool will unroll that way the spool is not unrolling the tape take a piece of scotch tape make sure it's on the bottom of this uh a spool arm here because you don't want the spool rubbing on the tape so you start on the bottom and then just keep wrapping it up go down one side and then come back so you have two layers of ptfe tape once you're done you're gonna uh cut it and put that second piece of scotch tape again on the bottom of that arm there you don't want it on the top because the spool will uh, snag on the tape and pull it off you want it on the bottom Next up, we are going to put the uh, PTFE tube in place, and it just pushes into the uh, sockets to insert it. On the print head sockets, where it has four uh, openings for the AMS, just use whichever one you want. You just push the tube down as far as it will go, and then you insert the small clip that came with your printer to hold 
the wiring harness and the uh, PTFE tube uh, together and do it about the halfway point. Next up, uh, the filament ejector is optional. I don't use it on mine. It just slides into place and you put a screw up through the bottom of it. I don't use it on mine because I have multiple A1 minis next to each other and I don't want them ejecting uh, on top of each other while they're printing. On top of the printer here, uh, the wire cable can snag on top of the Z-axis uh, extrusion there. So what I've done is I've designed a little cap that you can print. It'll keep that wiring from snagging. It's linked in the video description. Now, the next thing I do uh, is something I really strongly recommend uh, if you use SD cards uh, to run your printers. Uh, use an SD card extender like this. And the reason is um, the actual SD socket that's soldered on the main board um, it can break with use. Either the clip retainer that holds the card in place or the socket itself can detach or become loose from the main board. Either way, you're going to have to replace that main board. It's expensive and it's difficult. I had this happen once on an Ender 3 and that's when I went to using these extenders. Um, <clears throat> with the extender, it's only six or seven dollars. Uh, you keep put, inserting your cards into it, and if it wears out eventually, then you throw it out, six or seven dollars, and two seconds later, swap it out, you're back in business. So it's a uh, very cheap insurance against uh, damage or anything happening to the socket on the main board on the printer. So that's why I use these. Uh, in addition to that, I just prefer using full-size SD cards. I'm not a real fan of micro SD. I lose them easily. Uh, Full-size SDs are easier for me to fumble around with with my big fingers. So, anyways, we'll move on. Once all that is done, plug it in, turn it on, and it should start up. So, you go through the startup menu, select your language, select your location. Uh, if it'll work, there we go. It's... Uh, and then you can skip connecting the Wi-Fi if you want. don't want to do that immediately. You can do that later. Uh, you will need to do that for doing firmware updates. Uh, you'll need the Bamboo app and that linked up to do any firmware updates, but it's not necessary to use it off the bat. You will need to go through and do the initial calibration. And we'll speed through all this here. Um, it's going to go through and do vibration testing and a number of other things. Um, once it's done, it will let you know and tell you that calibration is completed. And it's going to give you a lubrication reminder. So if you have not already lubricated per my video, make sure you go through and do that now. Next up, you're going to insert the filament. Uh, when you do this, make sure you cut the filament off at a 90 degree angle. Don't cut it at a 45 like you would for other printers. Uh, it's just with how the uh, filament uh, is changed out that you want to cut it like this. Um, put the filament roll on the spool holder and feed it into the PTFE tubing like I'm showing here. Then when it stops, you're going to want to press down on this lever here on the extruder and feed it in a little bit further. And that way it will grip it properly. Anytime you are changing filament, you're going to press this lever here on the right that will cut the filament off. And then you can pull it out of the PTFE tubing. Once you've done that, go back to your LCD, pull it up, and you can select your first file that you want to print and that's it. That's all you need to do to operate this printer. It's really simple. Um, when you do pull up uh, a model to print here, what you're going to see are these two options. Bed leveling and dynamic flow calibration. Uh, it's good to do both of those uh, every couple of days or if you switch filaments. You want to do the dynamic flow calibration anytime you swap filament colors. Um, so that's it. That's it for assembling the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. It is a fantastic little printer. Um, I say little. It'll fit nine dungeon tiles on it. It's not tiny. Uh, but 
linked above and in the video description is the video on how to lubricate your printer and this is essential uh, make sure you do this periodically i do it every couple of weeks it will give you a reminder if it's gone too long so that's it thank you for watching please click that like and subscribe button and leave me a quick comment